Hi, everybody. This is Mr. Fowling. And welcome to Podcast 6.2, where we're going to learn about limiting reactants, excess reactants, and why you don't want excess baggage. Okay. Well, maybe not that one. So let's go ahead and hop to work. All right. Remember the tricycles. I hope so. That was probably 10 minutes ago. How many tricycles can I make if I have six wheels? Whatever your answer is, you're wrong. Ah, ha, ha. I know. Wrong. You can't make any because you don't have any frames. Ah, ha, ah, ha, ah, ha, sucker. You've been made look, look like a fool in podcast land. Ha, ha, ha. So it depends on how many, if I have six wheels, it depends on how many frames, right? So frames could limit the number of tricycles, okay? So a limiting reactant is a reactant that controls the amount of product form, okay? Excess reactant is left over when your reaction is done. Use your limiting reaction for all calculations once you know it. The first thing you do is find it. Do a limiting reaction problem whenever you have two amounts of reactants. So let's look at some examples. 20 grams of mercury, which it figures mercury I do not know the molar mass of, so hopefully my phone can tell me, I react with 5 grams of O2. Um, calculate the maximum amount in grams of mercury oxide formed. Let's see if I have periodic in my phone. Periodic. No, I don't. I get rid of it. How did I really get rid of my periodic table app? What kind of chemistry teacher am I? Oh, man. I think it's 209. So there you go. You get to see if Mr. Fowler remembers it's 209.10. So 20 grams of HG. And a little, okay. I react with 5 grams of O2. So here's the way I'm going to do this. Calculate the maximum amount of grams of HGO formed. Okay. So what I'm going to assume is that 209.10 grams equals the mass of mercury. And I think that's right, although I feel bad. I suppose I'll actually Google it. I know. How sad. Um, Google on my happy little phone. Um, molar mass. Mass. HG. Okay, there we go. Come on, Google. Uh, 200.6. I was close. 200.59 is actually what it is. So what I'm going to do is I want to find grams of this, and I'm going to do it twice. So 20 grams of mercury times divided by grams of mercury on the bottom and one mole of mercury on top. So it's 200.59 is what the periodic table tells me mercury weighs. And then I'm going to convert those moles of mercury into moles of mercury to oxide. Okay. So moles of HG into moles of HGO. And I have moles over moles, so I'm going to use coefficients. So 2 over 2. And it's maximum amount in grams it can form. So count the grams, count the moles, and then moles of mercury to oxide, moles of HGO, and go into grams of HGO. One mole. And then to find the molar mass of this, it is 216.59, because O is 16, and that's that one. So I'm going to ask my calculator on 20 divided by 200, whoops, 0.59, times 2 divided by 2 times 216.59 is 21.6 grams. So that means that 20 grams of mercury can make 21.6 grams of Hugo. Let's see what oxygen can make. Grams of O2 to cancel grams of O2, and always go through moles. One mole of O2. Little g stands for grams, little g stands for go to the periodic table. I've got two O's, so I'm doubling my 16. Grams gone. Moles of O2. Get rid of moles of O2. Remember, I'm still trying to go into grams of HGO. Can't go right into grams, I have to first go into moles. So mercury oxide, moles over moles coefficients, 2 and uno. And then on the bottom, oh sorry, that's HGO, moles of HGO on the bottom, and grams of HGO on top. Now notice I'm doing this problem twice, but what's nice is the annoying um, molar masses, I get to use them over again, so I don't have to look them up twice. 5 divided by 32 times 2 times 216.59 is 67.7. So what this means is the most 
20 grams of mercury can make is 21.6. The most six, the most 5 grams of oxygen can make is 67.7. So if this is what I have, I can only make the smaller amount. So this is my correct answer, and this one is wrong. So the smaller answer is correct, and the larger answer is um, tricky. Okay. Say it's the limiting reactant and the excess reactant. So to find the excess reactant, what I want to do now is convert my limiting reactant into my excess reactant. So my limiting reactant is the one that limits how much is made. So if I add more mercury, I'll get more product. So to find the excess, I take my limiting reactant, which is 20 grams of Hg, and I'm going to convert that now into grams of O2. Grams of Hg, one mole of Hg, 200.59 times dividing bar, moles of Hg, and again, I'm trying to go into um, grams of O2, because that's what I have over here. But I can't go right into grams of O2. I first have to go into moles of O2. Moles over moles use coefficients, one and two. Times dividing bar, moles of O2. And I want to go into grams of O2, that's right. One mole, 132 grams. So this tells me how much of this stuff the limiting reactant needs. So 20 divided by 200.59 divided by 2 times 32. And this is 1.60 grams of O2 needed. That's how much I need. Well, how much do I have? I have 5. 5 minus 1.60 is 3.40 grams excess O2, because that's how much is left over. This is how much I have minus need equals excess. So calculating your excess, excess is left over, so it was waste. So why do we want to have excess? We want to find, uh, why do we want to have excess? Here's our answer. To make sure we use up expensive reactants. Let's say our reaction was something like gold plus poo yields whatever it is we're trying to do. Now, do you want to have excess gold where it won't actually make the product that you want? No, because gold is pricey. Thousands plus dollars an ounce. Poo is cheap. If you don't believe me, go in your neighbor's yard. They have a dog. It's right there. They leave it there all the time. So this is cheap. So if this is cheap, this will be our excess to make sure we use up all of our gold. Okay. So start with your limiting reactant. Convert your excess. That's what we need. Okay. So of course now we're going to do a couple more. And I hope I remember the molar mass of everything. 90 grams of FeCl3 reacts to 50 grams of H2S. What is limiting reactant? What is the mass of HCl produced? What is the excess reactant remains? OK, so speckle 3 plus H2S reacts with H2S for H2S. I get HCl, because it tells me. And then I'm going to have FeS left over. Now this is mildly tricky, because notice here it's iron 3. And sulfide is minus 2. So plus 3 minus 2 means you get Fe2S3. And I need to balance that. Ooh, Nelly. So let's see here. I have three chlorines. I'm going to go out on a limb and say I'm going to put a 2 here to balance my irons. That gives me six chlorines. If I put a 6 here, um, that balances my chlorines. But I need a 3 here to balance my hydrogens. And sulfurs are good. So 90 grams of FeCl3 and 52 grams of H2S. So notice I have two reactants. So I'm going to convert them both into the same thing, which is going to be mass of HCl. It could be liters. It could be anything. But here we go. Grams of FeCl3, one mole FeCl3. Little g stands for grams, and little g stands for go to the periodic table. 55.85 is iron. 35.45 times 3 is chlorine. So 35.45 times 3 plus 55.85 is 162.20. That's moles of iron. And again, I'm looking for grams of HCl. So goodbye, moles of iron. 
sorry, I mean three chloride. And hello moles of HCl. Six over two. I could have done three over one, but I didn't. And then moles of HCl. And grams of HCl. Little g stands for grams. Little g stands for go to the periodic table, which when I add together is 36.46 grams. Ask my calculator. 90 divided by 162, whoops, 162.20 times 6 divided by 2 times 36.46 is 60.69 or 60.7 grams F, I'm sorry, HCl. So 50 grams H2S, go to the periodic table of H2S, one mole of H2S, Sulfur is 32.06 plus 2.02 .02 for two hydrogens. I have 34.08 times the writing bar. Moles of H2S. And I want to go into still grams of HCl, but I can't go right into grams. I have to first go into moles of HCl. Six and three. Again, I want grams here. 36.46 grams of HCl. One mole of HCl. 62 divided by 34.08 times 2. Well, I reduced in my head. Times 36.46. And I get 111.3 grams. Or to 3 sig figs, 111 grams. Now, of HCl, how much is really made? Well, the most this can make is 60. The most this can make is 111. So this is it. My limiting reactant, which I didn't label last time, is FeCl3. My excess reactant is H2S. What mass does the excess reactant remain? So what I'm going to do now is take my limiting reactant, FeCl3, and convert it into H2S. Right. So times the writing bar. Grams of FeCl3, I almost forgot my 3, which is 162.20. And one mole of FeCl3 times the writing bar. Moles of FeCl3. And I want to go into grams of H2S. But before I go into grams, I must first go through moles. Always go through moles. Always go through moles. Always go through moles. Three. Always go through moles. Two. Times the writing bar. And my molar mass of H2S is 34.8. So one mole of H2S grams of H2S, and that's 34.08. And ask your happy calculator. So 90 divided by 162.20 times 3 divided by 2 times 34.08 is 28.4. That's not that. 28.4 grams of H2S needed. Well, how much do I have? 52 grams. 52 minus 28.4 equals 23.6. And I think I have another example that I'm just going to skip over. Yep. Um, I'm going to skip that just because I think we've done enough. Review. Limiting reactant of product. Oh, I'm sorry. Controls the amount of product made. So you should be good with that. You should be. You should know that right away. Excess is left over, so it should be cheap. Limiting reactant is used to calculate the amount of product and amount of excess needed. Always go through moles. Always go through moles. Always go through moles. And take it to the limit one more time. And perhaps most importantly.